it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and it's our very first inaugural maintenance in Del Mar. This installation is just a hair over a year old and I am so thrilled overall with how it looks. I've been clutching my pearls with concern over this garden and hoping all was well uh, and it is. So let's take a look at some of what has transpired over the last year. Now, this homeowner uh, travels extensively and his daughters come over regularly to, you know, check the mail and pull a weed or whatever, but no real maintenance has been done here for a year. So the Aeonium Sunburst, I've been getting messages from you guys regularly uh, about, oh no, look at all my leaves are burned. Is my plant gonna die? No. This is typical. It was a rough, hot summer. These plants are summer dormant. This is all just sunburn and you can absolutely at this time clean off all those dead leaves and just wait because once the weather cools down, the days get shorter, uh, this is going to bounce back in all its glory. Some of you that follow closely remember that we actually had to bring a mini excavator in here and add another day to the demo to pull all the giant or all of the bird of paradise. They were everywhere, everywhere in this yard. And we did a great job, but there are a couple of um, places where they're trying to make a comeback, but that's a really easy fix. We'll get after that. Uh, oh boy, this avatafolia looks awesome right here. Super happy with that. Uh, everything in the pots, the cactus in the pots look good. Uh, the little pacopodium lamerii, you can see where it lost some leaves totally normal, no big deal. Always remember, don't worry about the bottom leaves. Concern yourself with what's happening up at the top because this is the new stuff. And if this is all green and healthy and lovely, all of the bottom leaves that are yellow are just old. But also don't worry if they, all the leaves fall off. Yeah, and on the Pacopodium lamerii, this plant is very sensitive to cold. If temperatures drop much below, 48, 45 degrees Fahrenheit, she gonna pack it up. Um, she'll drop all her leaves. Uh, it's okay, as soon as things warm back up, leaves pop right back out. Uh, we've got, you know, some significant weeds, particularly in this stand of, glau of aloe glauca. So this is an example of where we will want to dig underneath, pretty much excavate the whole stand of plants so that we can get that grass from the roots, then reset the plants. We also have to be very mindful there is irrigation subterranean drip that's rung around each of these plants and we don't want to sever it. Although Greg is here if we do. <laughs> this Calanchoe Lucier, holy mother of pearl, look at that. I mean, she is just on fire. What a happy, happy, happy plant. This is a monocarpic plant, uh, meaning that when she blooms, she will die, but we sure are gonna enjoy her while she's looking good. Do you have holes in your leaves of your plants like that? That is snail, just so you know. Okay. Oh, ugh. yeah, look at this poor desiccated Aeonium sunburst. Oh boy, this was a really, this is microclimate, hot right here. Hot. Too. Yeah, because even the little Echeveria Sahara, we have a couple etchies under here that are just struggling. Check over here at this Echeveria that was planted behind the Dracaena Draco. So it was protected from the sun, pulled in more shade, and look at how spectacular that plant is. That is the same plant that we just looked at at the corner out front. So location really is everything. If your plants are pouting, it's worth it to pot, you know, to try moving them to another area. Look at this blue glow. That is perfection. Glowing. It is absolutely glowing. And this stand of, yeah, this is Pineapple Express. Thank you, Cully, um, is looking fantastic. I allowed enough room for this one to continue to spread and grow. But in time, it will compete with the blue glow. So decisions will have to be made, but that's okay. Uh, the Fercrea looks beautiful, just coming off of its bloom cycle. So you can see we've got some detritus in the black rock. 
but sometimes with the really small detritus, this is all I do. And, you know, rather than trying to pick it all out, I just work it down and fix it. Fixed. And then that, um, all of that detritus uh, is really good nutrients uh, for the soil too, as it gets moved down beneath, beneath the rock into the substrate. It feeds the soil and it's all good in the hood there. Um, what is this, Hannah? Yikes, Oh, look what we have here. We have a baby Cupaniopsis tree, carrot wood tree. That needs to go stat. Okay, everything in this island looks good. We've got more of the crabgrass that we're gonna have to excavate. That's a pain in the butt. Uh, yeah, the Solisto uh, cactus straussii looks, fa looks fantastic. Let me get this rubble out of the way. There, let that breathe. Okay, and then these are, these are aloe cameronii. Um, also look terrific. We'll likely dig these out, cut them off, and reset them so they'll turn red. I also, because this is a bush aloe, I want to control the size of this plant. The Petalanthus bracteatus here, you know, the best way to handle this, in my opinion, is to cut the floppy branches back as far as possible rather than trying to stake it. I don't like, aesthetically, I don't like the look of staking and tying plants up. Just doesn't look good. So I would rather just trim off the ones that aren't able to bear their own weight. It's just important to cut way back because you will find that the plant will branch beneath your cut. So the lower you go, the better. If we're gonna branch, I want it to be low on the plant, not high, because the plant won't be able to bear the weight of branching way up here. So this is a really easy fix. Remember too that Petalanthus bracteatus is in the Euphorbia family and it has that white milky sap. See on my hands? Don't be mad. I know I should have put gloves on, but I'm very fortunate in that my skin isn't sensitive to the sap. I just need to wash before I touch my eyes. <laughs> my eyes are very sensitive. Okay, so yes, I'm cutting, cutting, cutting low. So you get the idea, right guys, on this? And you can see how much better that is already looking. And I'll carry on. These also can be propagated. Remember, I got a bunch of cuttings from uh, the Gleasons and I have them in my pot in the backyard, just waiting to root. We did come in here, I guess three or four months after the installation because we had a rotten barrel cactus. I did a video on it. Turns out it had uh, succumbed to snout weevil, which was a shocker to me. I didn't know barrel cactus could succumb to uh, snout weevil. So I treated the area and we replanted with new cactus, which are thriving and doing just great. Here's another, oh, this is actually a calla lily, not a bird of paradise. Um, that'll be easy to get out. And my little cactus wall looks awesome, doesn't it? I mean, you just can't go wrong with that. This is not irrigated, this is xeriscape, meaning that it relies on rainfall and it is just not disappointing at all. It looks so clean and so nice. Then back here, remember, we, he wanted to keep this really simple, so we just did the Bracteatus. Looks amazing. The team did such a good job of getting up as much of the Bird of Paradise as they could because those run, and it's difficult to get it all, but they sure did a great job. This dead camellia was here last year, <laughs> which I find funny. Um, and then in the back, Different microclimate back here. It's a little cooler, so things are a little less stressed. This Aeonium sunburst, again, it looks just like it should at the, at the very tail end of summer. The Mangave Lavender Lady, ooh, stunning. Um, this Crassula undulata, too, is just doing exactly what I would want it to do. Look at that, it's just a big, soft ball of plant material. There have been no clippers. Nothing has touched that plant. It just maintains this natural undulated shape. These cotyledon, not super happy. 
they have um, some sooty mold on them. Ugh, yeah, it's pretty gross actually. Well, this is probably not the greatest spot. I am going to try. Oh, that's the irrigation. <laughs> Sorry, we interrupted the video because Greg was testing the irrigation and we heard gurgling. And sure enough, we've got, um, we have a little leak here. It's uh, actually a subterranean drip line that must have gotten nicked with a shovel possibly. Uh, but that's a pretty easy fix, right, Greg? Yeah, see there? So what Greg will do is he will cut that out and then retrofit another piece in its place, right? Mm -hmm. And then repair, just do a little little repair by cutting it out and replacing. Yeah, no biggie, but still needs fixed. Don't need water going where we don't need water. Uh, and then one thing that's gonna be really, really fun today is deadheading the golden barrels. And I know I could do a video on this and you guys would be happy as clams just watching me pull Oh God, this is so therapeutic. Wow. Uh, how fun is that? They're so ready. It is so ready. I mean, this is just not even difficult at all. So yes, we will take off all of the spent blooms off of the barrel cactus and it'll just be all cute and fluffy. Yeah, and the aloes, these ruticopes are famous for aloe mite, although the mite is located on top of the bloom. And in my experience, just cutting the blooms off is sufficient. Uh, we don't see any evidence of mite on the plant itself. The, thank God, the tree aloes, we've got a Hercules, we've got a Bainesii, and a fair ox. Um, they look great. They aren't showing any evidence of any infestations of anything or bugs. This variegated agave um, looks like a des, uh, possibly a desmediana hybrid is pupping, 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 pupping. So we are going to put a shovel under that too. Uh, our client's daughter is really excited to have the pups. So we will harvest those for her. As I was saying, the cotyledon aren't the happiest in here. I am going to treat them today with some, um, with some insecticidal soap. I'm gonna obviously cut off all of the spent blooms and we'll see how it goes. But next year I might take them out if they aren't happy here and they're gonna be susceptible to mold um, and mildew and bugs, then I'm not gonna try to fight mother nature on that. Then here, here is an aeonium. This is a classic example of what we talk about with a monocarpic plant. This plant bloomed out. This, this aeonium here, see, she went to seed. Um, she's basically done, but that doesn't mean that these are. These have not bloomed out clearly. So we will simply remove that mom from the herd. Then I'm gonna dig all of these up and reset them closer to the Portolacaria minima. I don't like this big gap right here. This doesn't feel good to me. And if I were, you know, another alternative would be to plant something in there. But with us only doing maintenance annually or seasonally at best, I don't feel real good about that. So reset those. What I wanna do is to create a specimen and maintain, I already created it, maintain a specimen garden, not, do uh, a bunch of cluttering and adding of plants just maintain what's here this speaking of clutter but in the best possible way this is um this is what i wanted this area to do it just needs dialed in um i need to cut back the portalacaria yeah this portalacaria is eating the garden. I mean, look at that. It's literally eating my barrel cactus. Um, but you know what? This is a really easy fix. Uh, when I trim back the portalacaria, I trim it like you trim any plant. We just give it a haircut. So we trim it in the traditional way. Just remember not to trim the tops until you have laced out the bottoms. If you trim off the tops, then it looks hacked up. But you can hack the crap out of the bottom. Look at that, what I'm doing. And then lay your top pieces over. See that? 
So you can thin this by a good 50% without impacting the look of the plant. So that's what I will do. I will come through and then make decisions. For example, here, I don't want to cover up this pretty rock. So once I've cut the under plant way back, I'll come in and I will lace out the top. I won't cut all of it, but just enough that I have exposed that rock. Super fun, guys. And look, there's Millie I buried under here, too. You can't even see it. Oh, my gosh, our little barrel colony. How precious is this? This was kind of an afterthought, um, and it gets zero irrigation. Probably not much water either, because even when it rains, the eaves probably keep it from getting wet. But happy, happy, happy plants, nonetheless. Wow. This is a really, really gorgeous agave attenuata blue flame. Um, so just so blue and completely unmarred because this also doesn't get blasted with the fullness of the sun. Happy spot, happy plant. The Fred Ives are doing fine. I brought those in as cuttings. Again, the Cal and Coey looks spectacular. This was a jade that belonged to our client's uh, wife. She's deceased, so that had very, very special meaning. And I'll continue to work with this and turn it into more of a bonsai as time passes. This combination of Aeonium Silk and Herbicum is a favorite of mine. And this, look at this. Now this Crassula Arborescence looks fantastic. Maybe it would be better to change out those cotyledons over on the other side for this crassula. They look basically the same, but this one clearly is happier in a little bit of shade than its, uh, than its friend. Oh gosh, guys, there's just so much to do. It's so much fun. And this also, the, the um, minima, <sighs> need to go after that, uh, covering up our milii again. Another beautiful blue glow beautiful aeoniums, Crassula argentia sunsets really behaving herself. Yeah, you know, here's another cotyledon. I'm just not loving it as much as that arborescence, the Crassula. See how similar those two plants are? But this just doesn't, it, it isn't aging as well. So that'll be a recommendation that I'll make to my client. Um, we won't be doing that today, but next time I come, perhaps he will agree to have me bring some different plants and just trade those out. Our little mammalaria over here in the pot looks fantastic. Oh, she's, oh my goodness, grew a baby right in the middle. Look how cute that is. That was a four bagger and now it's a five. How cute. All right, and then yeah, just from this perspective, remember those pots? I believe you did those, didn't you, Hannah? Over there on the pillars. Yeah, it's kind of a blur, but they look a little, they look like a lot right now. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much we'll do in terms of digging into those. I think I will probably hold off another six months and then perhaps just redo them all together. I think there's still six months more of life in them the way they are, and then they're just going to need reinvented. Um, all right, so that's uh, that's what we got. I've got Hannah here. I've got Luke here. I've got Colin here. I'm here. We got Daddy Greg on irrigation, and we are going to tear in now and see if we can bring this garden back to its beautiful potential. Maybe this could be in my...
Okay, so Greg installed a new controller, um, switched out a faulty valve, and fixed a little busted irrigation. And I know one of these days we'll break all those down for you, uh, but we're doing our best, I promise, with the time that we have. We had a, a few little fun cuttings for the client's daughter to take and work with. This being the first maintenance, uh, I think it went really, really well. There were very few weeds, a lot of detritus from the neighbor's yards. That was a, probably half our day was just cleaning up after the neighbors. But um, this is just absolutely stunning. We uh, went ahead and dug out this, this agave and depupped the whole thing. I just think that's, that's the wisest choice. Because the idea is, you know, this is a small, and I'm just tipping off the, um, the, the spent ends here. Um, the idea back here in this, well, this area here is more tapestry-like. It's supposed to be full and lush uh, and, you know, nailed it. Um, but this area back here is more of a, designated as more of a collector's garden. So as things start to grow, as agaves and aloes start to multiply, we'll move, uh, like the aeoniums, you know, we'll move those to the front or give those, gift those to his daughter. Um, you know, we'll probably dial in on some of the portalacarias too, as these specimen plants really get their legs and take off and grow. And, you know, it's just important to remember that a, a gardens evolve with time and you evolve with time. So don't be afraid to, to make modifications and to change things up. We didn't make many or really any modifications this visit, but you know, you can see here, for example, we've got Portolacaria, Agave, Lofantha Quadricolor, Calanchoe Lucie, and, um, Allocameronii and decisions will need to be made here in another year. We might want to pull some of this stuff out and just showcase the plant, showcase the Cameronii or showcase the quadricolor. I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. You know, same over here. This is absolutely gorgeous right now. Just, you know, the English country cottage garden kind of vibe that he that he wanted as an homage to his late wife was completely achieved with the way these plants have knit together over the year. I'm really, really pleased. That being said, next year, I will probably call this plant here, this, this cotyledon. And because these three barrel cactus are kind of lost now. So I'm thinking that the undulata, the argentia and the calanchoe can own this and I can move the barrels down here in front where this cotyledon exists now, then this uh, portalacaria, you know, can kind of fill in here and we'll just have a little bit of space. So, you know, I'm always thinking to the future. Um, really, really beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Also, this area over here. The plants are just so happy in this coastal Del Mar garden. There's such an incredible breeze that blows through here. It's just so nice. Uh, this is that, well, we already talked about this, didn't we? The arborescence that I prefer to the cotyledon. Um, just is a tougher plant, happier, and I think it's going to be a better choice in some areas. The Aeonium sunburst, you know, are looking a little fried. That's the only kind of mint in this garden today. But I know from experience that those will make a dramatic comeback um, real, real soon. So, this little bed got... yeah, this little bed got some TLC too. Um, look at that, Fred Ives. I'm so happy that we got some Fred Ives going in here. And this is another one, you know, we have this beautiful aloe ferox and we know what its potential is. So this might may be also a candidate for a rethink in a year or two. You put that back? I don't know if daddy's done well, can... messing with this, but yeah.
Okay, got it. All right. Um, so yeah, you know, the idea is to just keep moving things around. That's the fun of it, moving stuff around. Kind of like, you know, you're not ready for new furniture, but you're really bored with the layout in the house. So you just move the couch over to that wall and the TV over to that wall, or you move your bed over to the other side of the room. That's what I'm talking about. And succulents lend themselves so well to that. You know, if you can get your foundation plants on lock, like I've got my Banesii, I've got my Hercules, and I've got my Ferox. Those aren't going anywhere. My Dazzlerian, my Barrels, uh, but the rest of this is flux, and we can do, we can do whatever we want. Oh my goodness! But yes, just uh, super, super happy. Um, I did treat the agaves uh, with uh, bear tree and shrub systemic against potential snout weevil. Remember that being monocarpic, agaves are a plant that we don't need to let bloom. I've been told that, that the uh, active ingredient in the bear tree and shrub is not beneficial to our, to our pollinators who will go after a bloom and can be impacted by the product. So if you're going to apply the product, you need to be sensitive to remove blooms immediately. And with an agave, that's no problem because when that thing starts to bloom out, it's a dunner and it's going anyway. Um, I just don't want to lose all these plants to snout weevil and we have had a lot of it this season. So, you know, here we removed the rogue calla lily. Um, actually, there were a couple of them here and then reset the Aeonium sunburst. It's just really important to get these things by the root so they don't keep making a comeback wherever possible. This area took Hannah and Luke a long time because of this Cupaniopsis tree right here at the neighbors. Just dropped so much detritus. Um, but it looks really, really clean and, and beautiful now. And I am going to suggest to the client a regular maintenance package just to keep this garden maintained to this standard because it's doable. It's really doable. Uh, we can then protect the plants and keep, you know, all the detritus at bay. Um, that's all I did in here. I, I removed spent blooms and I picked up I picked up detritus. I did give the cactus a drink and I gave the, the plants in the pots a drink because they are not irrigated. And now that we are at the very, very end of summer, entering fall and the weather has cooled and the days are shorter, I felt okay applying a little bit of water to these plants that are currently not getting a drop. Oh goodness, look, here's my kneeling pad. I would have forgot that. And yes, I went ahead and limbed up this Dazzlerian longissimum. There were so many leaves and pods from this um, Capaniopsis tree that I couldn't even get in there. So I just, I limbed this guy up. We, uh, look at Greg, he's still picking up leaves. It's never ending. I mean, Rick, we could probably stay another hour or two. There are one, two, three, four, five of us. We could spend the equivalent of one person another eight hours in this garden just puttering and, and whatnot. But it looks beautiful, doesn't it, guys? I mean, everything, this pack of podium is so magnificent. The, the mangaves are really getting their legs. The calanchoes are spectac. The titanotas are wonderful. I mean, everything is just so beautiful. The Dracaena draco is mighty. Uh, I didn't see any evidence of any issues on any of my big foundation plants, which made me really, really happy. So, yeah. Um, did you make any modifications to the irrigation as far as days or time or anything? No. The guys really nailed the irrigation on this project. These plants all looked great. There were only a couple that were slightly stressed that I gave a little bonus water to. But 99% of the plants are just getting exactly the right amount. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. Be sure and hit me up with any questions that you have in the comments. Subscribe, like, share. Thank you so much. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity in Del Mar with the first maintenance of our one-year-old installation and your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.